One of the weaknesses of traditional seminary education is that it is graduate school. And in order to get through doing well, you have to be good at graduate school. <laughs> The fundamental task of a shepherd is to lead a flock and to feed the flock, to, to care for sheep, to lead sheep, to guard sheep, to guide sheep. In order to do that task well, you need to learn from men who are doing it faithfully. So what does it look like to exercise oversight over a congregation? That's not something that you can learn from a textbook. The only way to do that is to see it in action. The minister, like all of the congregants, is more than just a brain. So if you're just going to be in the classroom and the only thing you're going to be doing is reading the books, writing the papers, uh, again, all of that's good because you do have a brain and you do need to have the mind developed, but you've got to have some practical experience. You need to know what it actually looks like. Uh, so much of what we learn and so much of what I've learned in my ministry has been from being around other ministers. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And uh, that's actually downplayed, like everybody's supposed to be their own man now, which is a stupid idea. Um, yes, you are an individual, but that's not all that you are, right? You have all of these saints who've gone before you and you've got other ministers right around you. You can look at the church and uh, you're going to structure that work you do in a similar fashion to those who are already engaged in that particular ministry. We intend to offer a carefully sequenced course of study we want our students to have deep roots in the scriptures, to engage in the great conversation and the discussions in church history, the theological riches of the Reformed tradition, but we also believe that theology is meant to be applied. Doctrine has to come out your fingertips. And so we want to equip our students in order to equip the saints for the work of ministry in local churches. Pastoral ministry is a lot like working in the ER. It's full-time, you don't really have weekends and evenings off, and uh, you are on call for whenever there's a problem, and particularly when the bone is sticking out. When there's some kind of a catastrophe, some kind of accident, you're the one they call, and they come in and say, whatever, adultery has happened. Dad was angry and, and got violent. And now you're there to help pick up the pieces. If you're used to working in the ER, you're used to meeting with other elders and pastors, godly men, who are used to seeing, you know, see these things and know, you know this is this happens in a fallen world. Sinners sin. They're not shocked and they don't freak out when somebody comes through the doors and their the the bone of one of their legs is sticking out funny. You, you, if if an ER doctor freaks out and you know starts shrieking, you think <laughs> I don't want to go to this ER. Pastors and elders need to be the kind of godly men who know that sin happens in this world and. God's word is the medicine they need. In the old Greyfriars, the student would come in and they'd have a, a boatload of books to read the first year and academic work and everything. When they completed the first year, the student would then begin sitting in on elders meetings and they'd see, oh my goodness, this is, this is what ministry is actually like. So you have the opportunity of students beginning to do actual pastoral work or be confronted with actual pastoral situations under the guidance of a seasoned group of elders already. The apprenticeship model allows for there to be tons of time spent with elders and pastors. When I was in Greyfriars um, a couple decades ago now, that was probably one of the most significant elements of my time, which was spending time just as a fly on the wall in an elder meeting, or just watching elders discuss a challenging situation and then make a plan, and then hearing about how they, they carried it out. And depending on the level of apprenticeship and so on, you might also be called upon to join an elder in a counseling situation. And a big part of it is just learning um, that to see how God is faithful, seeing how his word applies to all these situations, the gospel applies. Also uh, beginning to join in some of the work of elders, uh, like reading scripture, leading congregational prayers, and getting feedback from the other elders and pastors on how's that going. Probably also leading Bible studies, um, parish discipleship groups, um, but you're beginning the work of the ministry in the context of other elders and pastors whom you are emulating and following their example, getting feedback. And it's by the blessing and the continued affirmation of those elders that you are qualified and called to the ministry that you then progress to a third year where you can complete your MDiv uh, with that local church's full endorsement 
And then NSA is coming alongside and saying, yes, and academically, they've also met the requirements.